Good morning, good morning, family God. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. It's today's Friday, so you already know how we do on a Friday. So, man, let's go for it. And I'm excited. This is the time that oh, I get excited about Fridays in the morning because we switch it up a little bit and we call it Authentic Imitationology. And this is episode number 83. Can you believe it? Oh, we are moving. God is good. He's faithful to his word. So this ministry, he says he's going to reach people with his word, with his message through this ministry. And man, is he doing it. Amen. God is good. God is faithful. Good morning, Sister Joanne. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo, my sister and my friend. So we are here and we are on fire. We are able to say that we're on fire because God gives us this fire. Amen. And he gives us the shining light and the bright light and the shining light and a beautiful light. And he takes us from the darkness into his marvelous light. So we don't have to walk in darkness no more. We have the light of Christ. Amen. And that light cannot be contained. The light of Christ is a blazing light. Today we're going to call this one faith to overcome. We need faith to overcome. Faith in Christ. Faith in God. Faith in his promises. Faith in his word. Faith in his kingdom. Faith in his heaven. Faith in everything that he has. Not faith in faith. Not faith in the idea, not faith in opinions, not faith in the world, not faith in the government, not faith in your family members only, but faith in God. Amen. And we're going to talk about that really quick because we have this devotion time that I don't like to spend too much time on because it will probably overwhelm me or overwhelm you. But let's go into the word and and, um, take snapshots in the morning, the first of your day. Amen. If you have time. If not, then you can watch the replay. But if you have time and if you're with me right now, you know what I'm talking about. Like, let's get right into it. Let's see what the word has for us and let's apply it as soon as we can. Like today. Faith can overcome physical limitations. Faith can overcome physical limitations. Like I know what happens in the spiritual realm becomes a reality in our physical realm. So it happens in the spirit first and then it becomes a reality in our physical life. Your thoughts, if you think about something good for long enough, amen, that goodness, which is God, because God's the only thing, or anyone who is good, then that good part will flow out of you. If you think negative all the time, or something bad all the time, or something evil all the time, be careful, because that evil negative thought, it will be spiritual first, and then it may manifest physically here on earth. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 to 12. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12, right here today in the morning Devo. So it's good to see everyone is back. Amen. I really pray and hope that this weekend will be the best weekend you had um, in a long time, right? And I'm hoping that for me and my family as well. Faith to overcome, authentic imitationology number 83. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. Amen. If you are um, listening at someone is with a Z.org, welcome back. Thank you so much for listening. I see the numbers. Amen. I see the people who's coming through the cities, the towns, the states that are listening. Thank you so much for listening. I hope and I pray that you continue to listen. Share this out. Don't keep me on the underground. Amen. Um, let's get more people, more ears, more souls involved in this ministry and in this radio network because I truly stand behind it because it's the Word of God. And I know if we get the Word of God out to as many people as possible, we are actually planting seeds of eternal life. That's the faith I have in Jesus. That's the faith I have. What He has said and done through this ministry, I know He could do a great, wonderful, powerful work in your life. Why? Because we are authentically imitating Jesus Christ. Amen. God. Through his word and we're following by way of Holy Spirit. We're being led by Holy Spirit. We're not being led by another man, uh, an organization, a church, or a system. We are being led by a holy God, Holy Spirit God that's living inside of us. So authentic imitationology. We're gonna pray first. After we pray, we're gonna share this out for like 60 seconds. And then at the other side of the 60 seconds, on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll get right into faith to overcome. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. Father God, thank you so much. I pray, Lord God, over every single person on the other side of the screen, on the other side of this mic, that you will bless 
that you would, Lord God, annihilate the tactics of the enemy over our lives, that you would dispatch warring angels to war against the principalities in our regions that are trying to distract, trying to kill, steal, and destroy your people. But we know that you are our Heavenly Father. And as we are coming close to celebrating Father's Day from the time of this recording, we know that you are the greatest Father that anyone could have. And I thank you, Lord God, for your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your power, your faith to overcome because you are the amen. And faith is driven by you because it is impossible for anyone to please you without faith. So I speak faith over everyone's life right now. I speak healing to everybody's physical body right now in the powerful name of Jesus, which you are the healer, Lord. I pray that forward. I pray health to the body, strength to the bones. I pray a hedge of protection over myself, my wife, my family entirely, and every single person that's connected on the other side of the screen and on the other side of this mic. Psalm 91, I speak it right now in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, that you would teach us to have the faith to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So let's go for it. 60 seconds to share this out. When we come back, we'll get right into it. I'll be right back. Let's continue moving. Let's get into the word. Let's see what the word has for us today. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. Amen. So again, welcome back. This is Friday. So Friday we switch gears and we call it authentic imitationology. This is like the same morning Devo, but not really because we shift gears and we try to look and focus more on the works of God, on his, on his character. Amen. And we find ways of how we can imitate that. Amen. Um, through our fellowship and our fellowship with one another and our fellowship of the Lord. Amen. Because he's good. He does works, signs and wonders on a day to day. You don't really have to travel the world and follow people who have a, a special anointing for healing, for deliverance, which is real popular right now. You don't have to follow them globe trot around the world for them. We have a living, holy, righteous, loving God living inside of every single person who called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, who are saved, born again, amen, born in the spirit of God, baptized in the spirit and all that, amen. We have God at our, on our side and inside of us working through us, amen, and working in us. And that's powerful. So get ready. God's word is just like, I know that I can actually apply his word to my life. Now, if I'm reading a story about another person from the scriptures, amen, um, I might not necessarily be able to do what the person has done from the time it was written, but I could definitely take the principles of God and and apply the principles in my life and watch God's word operate, his word operate in real time. That's what makes being a Christ follower Christ follower, exciting, amen, because you can apply his word to your 
day-to-day life. Amen. And you can see how relevant he is in his word, for his word, for his purposes and his plan. Amen. Dad, I forgot to share it on the blades. Okay, let's go for it. So I got it ready for the screen for those who are just listening. Amen. Listen, um, word for word, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to speak and read exactly what we're seeing on the screen so that way you won't miss a beat. Authentic imitation knowledge, let's go for it. Today, I try to do these every Friday, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, Because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child. Now, I'm I'm not going to say that because Sarah received physical power to conceive a child that right now that sisters all around the world who are uh, having issues childbearing, I'm not going to say that because it happens to Sarah, it's going to happen to you. But what I am going to say is that God's word says this woman, Sarah, received physical power to conceive a child. Amen. So receive this as an encouragement to your situation in your life if you're like Sarah that you need faith to receive physical power to conceive a child that's what I'm saying and that's what the word is encouraging you right now to do even when she was long past the age for it because she considered God who had given her the promise to be reliable Reliable promise of God, right? And trustworthy and true to his word. There's a whole bunch of scriptures you could go to. Amen. And if you take a snapshot of the screen, you could go to these scriptures later on. Genesis 17, 19, Genesis 18, 11 to 14, Genesis 21 and 2. So from one man, so we're talking about Sarah, which is a woman, now the word of God shifts to this man. So from the one man, though he was physically as good as dead, there have sprung descendants whose number is as the stars of heaven and as countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore. Genesis chapter 15 and 5, verse number 16, chapter 6, excuse me, um, Genesis twenty two seventeen, 17, Genesis thirty two twelve. 12. And of course, that's speaking of um, the father of faith, Abraham. So why is God mentioning these two? Amen. Why? Because he used these two to reveal himself and to show that his word is, like Sarah said, reliable and trustworthy and true. Reliable, trustworthy and true. That's a good series right there. God's word. So. What was the reason that Sarah received physical power to conceive a child? Faith. What was the reason that there was descendants whose numbers as the stars of heaven and as countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore? How did that come about? By what? By faith. Faith to overcome the limitations that we have On this earth. Guess who else placed limitations on himself? Jesus put limitations on himself. He humbled himself to come to us in a form of a man. He could have came riding on a cloud and his first entrance, right? But he came and humbled himself. Holy Spirit impregnated Mary, young Mary, right? The woman to conceive the Lord. There was no father blood in that whole situation. You can read it for yourself. The angel came to Mary and said, you have found favor with God. Um, you're going to bear a child. The Holy Spirit came, came upon Mary and she got pregnant, conceived the Lord Jesus. She literally gave birth to her Savior. That's another word right there. She, Mary, gave birth to her Savior. And it wasn't by faith, it was by choice. God picked her. Amen. And she found favor with God. From there on, amen, 
Uh, she saw the f- wonder working power of a living, holy, righteous, loving God in a physical form with limitations. Because at that point, he was not omnipresent, right? We see in the scriptures that he was going to towns throughout. He was physically going there. Amen. And he limited himself by choice um, to say, listen, I'm going to be one of you guys for a little bit. But when he ascended to the right hand of the throne, he sent one without limits. Amen. That is omnipresent. Once again, Holy Spirit, God. How many people think you can contain the Holy Spirit into your house, your church body, your worship house, your church building? You think you couldn't contain the Spirit of God? I've even heard people say, uh, okay, let the Spirit move. As if, as if, ladies and gentlemen, we could stop the Holy Spirit from moving. He has, Holy Spirit of God has no limitations. We're the ones that are limited. Amen? Um, I believe we say things including myself sometimes, i am be like, that doesn't make any sense. I've heard people say, God can't do this and God can't do that because, you know, there's sin. And wherever there's sin, God can't do this and God can't. No, wherever there's sin and God is not in the sin, amen? But he can save you, rescue you, forgive you for your sin if you put your faith and hope and trust in the Lord who offers us eternal life, who offers us forgiveness for our sins, who cleanses us from all unrighteousness and wickedness, amen, and tells us, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more, what does that mean? Oh, you mean to tell me um, you're not going to sin no more, Sam, that you're not a sinner? You know, the Bible says if you, don't, if you say you're not a sinner, God is not in you, you're a liar. I'm not saying I don't sin. I'm saying I could actually say no to sin. I'm saying that I'm not bound to sin. I'm saying that I'm cleansed from all wickedness and righteousness. I am saying that I'm a saint who deals with sin, and sin has no, no no control over me anymore. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You know what's what's good about that? It's not only me. It's all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We could actually look at sin and say no sin. Before Christ, we could never say that because we were slaves to sin. Now we are free from sin and his, capti- his captiveness or We're not bound to it. We're not a slave to sin. The power of sin has no more power over a child of God. That's what I'm saying. And I have faith to believe that. And because I have faith to believe, I see that God's word is true, trustworthy, and reliable. No doubt about it. Apply God's word. You're dealing with what? Addictions? Amen. We got a scripture for that. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You're dealing with uh, fear? I got a scripture for that. Psalm 91. You're dealing with your identity. I got scripture for that. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Um, you don't know where you're from. You don't know how you got here. I got a scripture for that. Genesis chapter one, verse number one. You're dealing with um, anxiety. I have a scripture for that. Philippians four sixteen, I believe around there. Amen. So we have the word on what we're going through. Amen. Have faith to overcome. You're not going to overcome any obstacle in life. Amen. If you don't have faith in the one that's reliable, trustworthy, and true. And that is God. Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit. You could go to an idol. You could go to a guru. Counseling is okay. Amen. There's nothing wrong with counseling. But if the counselor or the guru, especially the idol who doesn't talk back, amen, if you're in idol worship, I suggest right now that you break those idols and come to the living, holy, righteous, loving God who actually can respond to when you speak. You have a conversation with the living God through his word. Right? Counselors are great, but if a counselor that you go to is not filled by Holy Spirit, they're just filled with academics, they're just filled with knowledge and wisdom of this world, um, you're going to leave there probably worse than you got there. Right? So don't do that. Get your life focused on the author and perfecter of your what? Of your faith. Amen? If you have a guru that you follow with, take the wisdom that they've learned from the experience. Amen? And you can use it in certain areas of your life, but test that knowledge and wisdom and put that in comparison to the Word of God, which God Himself says, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to Him. No one is going to a level of God. Amen? When it comes to wisdom and understanding. No, God is showing us His wisdom 
and his understanding through his word. So we have the word on it. That's why I encourage people, listen, get into the word. Don't be afraid of the Bible. I know before I was saved, I used to look at the scriptures and be like, um, what is this? I'm not understanding what this word says. But when I got born again, when I got saved, when God touched my life, he changed my mind, changed my heart and transformed my heart and transformed my mind. And when I started reading the scriptures, the scriptures seemed and they still seem to be speaking directly to my life. And I get understanding. Brother Frank, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's Friday. So I hope you have a great Friday and the rest of the weekend is good for you. Faith can overcome physical limit- limitations. Do I have to argue the fact that we are limited in this state, in this bodily form? I can't right now jump off the screen and literally fly to Africa and visit some of my brothers and sisters in Christ over there and then fly back to the studio. I can't physically do that and you can't either. If someone is saying that they could do that, amen, um, pray. (laughs) Pray right away. You might have to call 911 and, you know, they might be going through some kind of mental stage. But when you have faith, you could overcome the physical limitations. In other words, I don't. I can't go to Tanzania. I can't go to um, where the missions trips in my church or people are going to Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and all those other stuff. I can't physically be there, amen. But I could be a part of them going there. So a part of me is there if I could give or donate or support. And I have three missionaries in my mind and in my heart right now that need support. And I'm trying to support them. Amen. And we could all support them. Amen. If you go to uh, the website, someoneiswithaz.org, forward slash donate, whatever you donate, you could put a note. Hey, this is for the missions trip. This is for the missions trip. I have three missionaries that I'm trying to support. That's all I'm saying. You have faith to overcome your limitation. I have faith to overcome my limitation. And right now, my limitations is finances. I'm limited in my finances, but if I have faith in the one, right, who gave me the health to gain wealth, I have faith to overcome my limitations and finances so I could give to every good work. I want to apply that in my in my life. The Bible says that we are able to give to every good work. Amen. And I'm counting on God's word to make that happen. And I'm not lazy. Everybody who knows me and says I'm always on the move. As a matter of fact, so a lot of people, I was going to say some people, but a lot of people, they don't even contact me because they say that, oh, I know you're busy, so I don't want to bother you. No, you know, you're not a bother. Call, text, amen, email me. Connect, let's connect, amen. Um, I'm outside a lot. When I say outside, I'm not outside playing basketball, football, baseball. I'm outside evangelizing. I'm outside, I'm outside working, delivering meds, um, doing um, lift rides with the ride share, meeting people, talking to real people, talking to souls, amen, and using kindness as my weapon of choice uh, when I speak to people. And that kindness leads to conversations that are beautiful, amen. You'll be surprised what kindness can do for a conversation, what kindness could do to lift up your faith. Amen. When you start speaking about the kindness of God and what God has done in your life and share, you know, little things about your testimony or share where you come from and share how you got out of this and how God supplied that. It's a beautiful conversation. Faith to overcome. And in Hebrews chapter 11 is an amazing chapter because there's other people that God mentions in there. Right. And he never mentions what they did wrong. And I believe everybody on that list did something wrong. Sarah, Abraham, David, wrong. Read the chapter for yourself and you'll see. How come they God didn't mention what this person did, what that person did? It's because he doesn't remind you or me about our past. He tells and reminds us of who we are in him. Amen. And shows us that we have a bright future coming if we put our faith, hope, and trust in him. Through faith. We all depend on God in difficult times through faith. Even an atheist has no choice other than to depend on the God that they don't believe in or they can't confirm or they can't prove. Amen. When a supernatural hits their life and they're being attacked by supernatural beings and they were like, where is this coming from? They have to rely on the God that they don't believe in. Trust me. They just can't admit it because they they're focused on their own little group. And saying, if I say this, and if I admit this, then I'm really conceding. And I'm really saying, I do really believe in God. But since I'm already in this atheistic viewpoint on this worldview, I can't say that. 
I see debates on TikTok and on the social medias all the time. And listen, these people are smart people that say, okay, prove that there's a God and all this other stuff. But man, their reasoning is like this, a big circle. It just goes in a circle and a circle and a circle. Either they're not being honest with themselves or they don't love themselves or they're not seeking truth. And they're stuck in an alternate reality of saying that there is no hope for a person. I and mean, once we're here, we just die and that's it. There's no hope in that because they don't know where to place their faith. They don't have faith to overcome. They have themselves to be overcome by themselves and for themselves. It's called selfishness. I always tell people, especially the young people, draw a circle around yourself. And they physically, you know, in their mind are like, okay, they go like that. I said, who's in the middle? And I, and I asked them, who's in the middle? They said, I am. I said, that's what happens when you don't let God into your life. You draw a circle around yourself and you're in the center of that circle. But when you have God and you put your faith to overcome in him, amen, you draw a circle around yourself and that circle is the circle of eternal life. And now you place yourself in God's hand and God's in the center of your life. Amen. Because he is the circle of life. He is the eternity. Amen. He is the eternity. And listen, once you have God and his faith in you to overcome your limitations physically will start really going away. I've seen people get out of wheelchairs because they have faith, not in the healer, not in the, the one who's placing their, laying their hands on them for them to overcome the limitation of not being able to walk. But they have faith and trust in a holy, loving God and the word is, spoke, is being spoken through them and to them and they get up out of those wheelchairs and they walk. Yes. I see miracles right in front of my eyes. I have two living miracles that live with me. Our two daughters. People say, oh, that happens all the time. People give birth all the time. They have children all the time. Why is that a miracle, Sam? Because the doctor said it was not going to happen. <laughs> so God said, um... I could fix that because we have faith in God who gave us a word and his promise held on to it. Amen. And that faith was able to overcome our physical limitations. That's how powerful this is. So I have a bonus for you. Job 23, 8 to 10. Job 23, 8 to 10. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. If you know the story about Job, you know he's, he's going through it at that time and he knows. I don't see, I don't find him, I don't see what he's doing. But when he knows what I'm doing, when he comes to my place of need, amen, I come out like gold. Amen. Because Job realized that he had faith to overcome his limitations and God bless him so much. You got to read the story of Job. So I'm out of time. So I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for these morning devos. This is Authentic Imitationology, episode number 83. Please come back next time when we have a live. Amen. Share the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org. Share that out because there's a lot going on this weekend on that website. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.